Good afternoon and good afternoon. My name is Deidre Teagarden and I am the director for the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center and we are so honored uh, to have you all here with us today. You are actually seeing the premiere of the premiere. Uh, and I think I spoke with every single one of you on the telephone. You are the screening that was a result of that beautiful front page news article in the Maui News on Tuesday or Wednesday. So we have three sh uh, showings today and you are truly the very first. So we thank you for being flexible with your schedules and coming out and being with us today. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors uh, who have helped this uh, with us today, the Mune Kio Haraga and the Maui Sons and Daughters of the Nisei Veterans. The President, uh, Leonard Oka, is here with us today as, as well as many of the Sons and Daughters. So they helped set up and brought the snacks, so we thank them very much. Uh, but we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the Japanese Cultural Society of Hawaii. Uh, when Carol Hayashino, their wonderful director, uh, gave us a call about a month ago saying they wanted to premiere the Maui story here on Maui, uh, we said absolutely yes, it is such a powerful film and obviously a very timely one and one that has brought a lot of new people out to our center. The late United States uh, Senator Daniel Inouye said this of internment. He said, the lessons learned must remain as a grave reminder of what we must not allow to happen again to any group. So we are just uh, very honored to have the premiere of the screening of Voices Behind Barbed Wire, Stories of Maui County. Today, again, thanks to Carol Hayashino of the Japanese Cultural Center of Hawaii, and of course, Ryan Kawamoto, who has written and directed the documentary. Uh, and a big thanks to the JCCH for producing the documentary. We will have time after the premiere of the movie to do some question and answer with both Carol and with Ryan. I would like to acknowledge that we do have family members of uh, internees in the audience today, so we thank you for allowing us to share those stories uh, with the greater community. I'd like to bring up Carol Hayashino. She is a lovely individual who has been with the JCCH since 2012, and I think I, I met you when you first started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she has been uh, very involved in many levels with uh, the American of Japanese ancestry community, with Japan, and she was incredibly involved with the national legislative effort uh, for redress and the reparations for Americans of Japanese ancestry incarcerated during World War II. So please give a big round of applause to Carol Hayashino. She's going to welcome us all here today. Thank you, Deidre. The Japanese Cultural Center of Hawaii is very honored, actually, to present this film, Voices Behind Bob Warrior, The Stories of Maui County, with the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. You know, we chose Deidre and this organization because they were so incredibly helpful in the production of this film. This is actually a, a, for, a part of a four-part series of short documentaries we are producing on the Japanese American incarceration and it's focused, they're focused on each in each county. So Maui is the first to roll out and you are a very special group of people to see today's film. Uh, the film, as Deidre mentioned, is, was, is written and produced by Ryan Kawamoto. It is uh, a Japanese Cultural Center project funded by the U.S. Department of Interior, the uh, National Park Service, under the Japanese American Con Confinement Site Grant Program. So we are really thrilled to share this film with you today, and both of us will be available after, this, after the screening, after the film, for uh, questions and answers, or discussion. Right. I'll just keep my remarks brief because I would like the film to sort of speak for itself, but um, a little bit about myself. I'm act I actually grew up on the Big Island, so I'm a neighbor island boy myself, and oftentimes the stories of the neighbor islands get lost in the shuffle in the larger scale of things. So uh, we felt it was very important to tell Maui's story. 
So uh, Maui, this is your story. Thank you for that film. Thank you. We have time for question and answer. We do have a microphone over here. Uh, your questions can be directed to Carol or to Ryan or to both. I would like to just start off with, um, again, a thank you. That is um, soul moving and heart wrenching. How, as the as the the writer, were emotionally? How did you do this? I mean, I'm sure you lived and breathed all these stories for a number of years. How were you able to uh, just emotionally handle all of it? I'll invite the two of you up here. Uh, if you're asking me how do I handle it emotionally, uh, it was pretty hard. I don't. Hopefully didn't turn around and look at me. I actually was crying a little bit watching this again. So it still gets me and I've watched this film a hundred times because I also uh, did a lot of the editing for it as well too. So it's still very, very raw. Um, and I don't have a personal connection to it. But um, I do want to mention that, you know, two of these stories here directly came because of the work done by uh, the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. So thank you very much for uh, keeping this these stories alive. If it wasn't for this organization and also the work of David Fukuda, um, we would not have two of the three stories that you saw. So David really pointed me in the direction of, of two of those stories. And um, there are many more stories. So if you would like to go downstairs, I believe, yeah. the full exhibit is up with many other stories that we could not include in this film. But um, yeah, so it, it, it's definitely a struggle <laughs> to get through it. I still cry every time I see the film. I still cry when I see the hour documentary, The Untold Story. This film has really been in the making for three years. And um, it started as a 15 minute documentary, a 15 minute short documentary. And as Ryan proceeded, there was just so much information and the stories are so compelling and unique. It evolved into um, nearly half hour. A half hour documentary. So, what did you think? Great. Is any of the gentlemen or the ladies in the talking today? Are any of the families here? I'm going to let them identify <laughs> themselves if they wish. Families of internees. Can you introduce if you'd like? Uh, my name's uh, Doug Samashima, I'm the son-in-law of uh, Dr. Wata. He was planning on being here today. Yeah, <clears throat> he was a little under the weather and uh, had to stay home. But I'm sure you'll enjoy it when he gets to see it. So I understand Dr. Ohata is 100? Yeah. 100 years old. Wow. wow, isn't that amazing? And, and in the back? Poston? Poston, yes. And uh, he passed away a few years ago, but um, I'm here in honor of him. Oh. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Ohata's sister, Kay, is here as well. Dr. Ohata's sister, Kay. Thank you so much. Thank you to the families for sharing your stories. I am also a granddaughter, daughter of uh, former internees. And every time I, and I think that's part of the reason I get emotional because the story, every story of an internee is different, unique, and personal. But then there are so many commonalities. So my grandfather, like Mr. Tirada, was sent to Santa Fe. It was a Department of Justice <coughs> camp. My, I, my father, my mother, my, all my aunts and uncles were sent to Brower, Arkansas, where the Cochise were, were interned. Um, and while their experiences and the impact are similar, they're different, it, it's really, a, I mean, there are just very unique stories, but it is history that ties us together. Are there any questions or comments you have of Ryan, of some of the stories or the film or, um, yes? Lots of 
so much a question, but uh, it's hopefully a mini story. My uncle was David Kiyoshi Enomoto, and my father was Gaston Napoleon Tosiske Enomoto. Uncle Kiyo was taken by the United States military on the morning of December 7th from his home to some place where he helped to restore the communications in the Pacific since Pearl Harbor was bombed, there was no communication center. Sunday morning, my father had come back from church. We lived in Upper Paia at the time, and took my mother into the bedroom, and when they came out, my mother was crying. My mother was not Japanese. My father was Hawaiian Japanese. And soon after, Dad went to see his older brother, who was no longer there. They lived in Kahului, in the old part of Kahului town, which is now all industrial by the treatment plant. And his wife, Mary Kamaka Enomoto, told my father that they took him to the base in Pu'unene, and that's when the naval base was activated. Well, it had been activated before that, but, um, so we never saw Uncle for a couple of years. We don't know where he was, and I was too young to learn the story, and by the time I became aware of what, what had happened, Uncle was passing away. So there are, I think, possibly, some other stories like that of what actually happened to the family on the day of Pearl Harbor. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your family story. And there are, as you said, there are so many stories that we are not aware of. There are so many untold stories. And that's what we're trying to capture. That's what we, we're trying to document now because we want our children and our grandchildren to know this history. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. What, uh, what are the plans for the, the site in Haiku and Kanakakai and Lanai? Were they discovered, you know, where they're trying to determine whether you know, what, what's gonna happen to that? Well, I mean, that's a good question. I, I um, you know, this, Ryan was able to uh, uh, accompany the archaeologists, and the archaeologists actually, they too were doing work for the Japanese Cultural Center. We had another grant that funded uh, their research of, of all the confinement sites on all the islands. And um, they submitted, they've submitted their report to us, and there are a number of recommendations that we're looking at. The, the challenge, uh, with these sites and the challenge in Maui is uh, some of the sites are on private property. Uh, like Haiku, part of it is on private property. Um, some sites are not easily accessible. We can't, you can't go to that county jail. Is it, what is it, the correctional facility or something yeah. near the airport, the, the jail. So you can't go there. So I think for each site, there are different recommendations we're looking at. So, um, so for example, and we would want to work with, we would want, the Japanese Cultural Center would want to work with the local community and certainly uh, Nisei Veterans Memorial Center on how best does Maui want to memorialize these sites. Some sites may have a wayside exhibit. That's what we would like. We would like to see a wayside exhibit at the site. Um, we would like to see, we, would, we, would, we might have um, the, the site on, um, Molokai, there are two buildings you saw stand, barely standing jail and the, and the courthouse. They, they were moved to that cultural park in Molokai. Um, we would like to find a way to preserve that, the, those two buildings and maybe move them back to a location that is more easy, easily accessible, a place that people can visit. So we want to, we actually would welcome any you know, suggestions and, and participation in how these sites should be preserved or memorialized. Um, 
I think also, uh, while the sites themselves are difficult and will take more time, what we'd like to do with this film, once it's finalized, once we, in the next month, um, release the, the film, I want to be able to, I want to make sure it's, it's distributed to all the schools, all the public schools. So I'm hoping, Deidre doesn't know this yet, but I'm hoping we'll work with Nisei Veterans Memorial Center to see that it's given to each school, each high school or elementary school, junior high, whoever is interested in showing the film, teaching the World War II experience, that they get a copy of this film. And that's something that we will provide to all the schools and libraries. Um, did you guys get information about the Kuruni stockade? Because I've heard stories about the stockade, about families that were interned there, confined there. That was no. close to the... That never, no. That's never come up before. No. Okay. Well, I, th I can tell you some people who were family members interned at the Pune stockade, which was near the mill. All, all we heard from that area was the um, families that got kicked out of their... The um, forced evacuation. Yeah, I have. I, we have not heard that, and I think that's what's been really interesting, Mona. Is you know when six years ago when um, the, the first, first film, film. I think it was called the film was called uh, the working title was 1800, and then it evolved to over 2,300 people were identified, and, and it grew from like 13 nine sites, 10 sites, 13, 17, and now 23 different sites. Um, where Japanese Americans were interned during World War II. Maybe so that's the that could site. be. That could that be. Could be. Site. Yeah. Um, I have, we have a teacher that works with us at, at Kamehameha, and her grandparents were interned there, and they did get the $20,000. Wow, okay. We need to. We definitely will follow up on that. Oh, okay. But they, and they were not an evacuee, they were incarcerated. They were allowed to go out and work in the mail, supposedly, yeah. and come back to the stockade at night. But they were, they were guns. They were. They were behind barbed wire. That's so interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll have to get more information on that. I think we have time for maybe one more question or comment. Um, one comment. Yes. I want to congratulate you on how you put the film together and the important message that came in. It's ongoing, the thing that you described is still ongoing for civilization. And I think the uh, strong message you're sending, and I emphasize on that, is history repeats itself, and how do we be accepting of other people, uh, other behavior, other civilization, and how we learn to live together in harmony. So thank you for that. I, I think you said it perfectly. I, I can't even comment further. That is exactly the point of uh, this film. And that is exactly the point of preserving history. Is so it's for our future. It's an investment in our children, and it's an investment in our democracy. Thank you so much again for being here. Thank you for sharing your comments. Thank you. A big thank you to Carol Hayashino and to Ryan Kawamoto. Thank you all for being here today on behalf of our board of directors and our, our supporters, we thank you. We do have our internment exhibit downstairs in our education center, so we have docents downstairs. We would love to have you come visit and learn more of the stories and perhaps share some of your own. So again, thank you very much for coming out today. We appreciate it greatly. Mahalo.